So I thought a video essay would be a good way to share my learning from this semester uh, because it gives me an opportunity to introduce you to two very special people to me, uh, people who I went through this journey with here at school. First of all, I'll start by saying as administrators, we never quite know uh, each member of our community fully. Uh, and this is one piece of learning that I take from this class in that it's an important thing to do, to take the time to understand each person's story, um, help everyone be heard, help every, everyone has opportunities and challenges, and it's our job to really support individuals by providing more opportunities for them and trying to take away some of their challenges. Um, while we don't really know how each community member is affected individually, the major themes of this course, isms, power and privilege and intersectionality, give us a starting place for this conversation. Uh, they gives us a snapshot or a lens to look at the reality with, regardless of our own personal situation. Uh, and speaking directly to intersectionality, I, I feel like that, more than any of them, really try, tries to highlight the intersection between each individual story and the the corporate or the 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 organization and how the organization highlights how the organization has a responsibility to to really take away some of those challenges that that maybe they're unwillingly um, forcing individuals to face. So the result of this course for me was a, a raised level of awareness and sensitivity for other people's stories. Um, this is definitely going to allow me as a leader to engage in important dialogue and be a part of change in the future, which I'm appreciative of. And each and every one of us, uh, as, as leaders, you know, we need to really be pushing to strengthen the identities of each of our students and our faculty. Uh, we need to raise them up. And sometimes that is working with individuals and sometimes is working with the rest of the community to take away obstacles that may be there and nobody knows about. Uh, as you mentioned, Dr. Magasi, though, higher level, a higher level of awareness means a higher level of responsibility. And so once now that I have this higher level of awareness, I, I start to see many different opportunities where I can play uh, more facilitatory role, uh, a more positive role, and yes, it's going to take time away from the normal things of my job. Uh, however, though these this time is really what important, and they're going to build a more positive fiber to the community, and it's going to take the community in the direction that it really needs to go. Without rambling on more, I wanted to really share that, in my case, that incredible responsibility um, that I took on this semester was with my grade one ball of joy, Maganthan. And Maganthan, who returned to school without one of his legs this year, uh, he returned the same week that we were discussing ableism. So I feel very uh, lucky and that this experience had a very big, deep, and powerful impact on me. The empathy and awareness was at full steam when he returned, and I personally was able to, to connect very deeply with Maganthan. Um, and that's, you know, there are the students where you, you connect personally with, but I feel like me trying to understand his story was an important step to that, and understand what he was going through, try to understand what he would go through at the school, try to overcome those obstacles before he would face them. These were valuable goals and goals that helped me connect to him much deeper. And I would imagine as a leader, I mean, not I would imagine, I'm, I am inspired as a leader from this course to try to understand everyone's story. And what are the, now I'm, I'm looking out over the students and I, one day I was sitting there in the morning as kids were going to class when the bell rang and I'm trying to understand, you know, I'm trying to remember all their names and I, there are kids I don't remember their name for and I say, well, how can I go and understand this student's story some more and get to know this student more and have something uh, to connect with this student about as well. I feel that's very important and something that this experience has brought to me. 
uh, the sense of empathy and concern on my part, uh, I think reflects, reflects my learning from this course. I, I've always been empathetic and concerned, but I, f I feel like this course has brought deeper levels of awareness um, of my own privilege and my own responsibility. Um, so I think that's it. Now, one thing that I mentioned last night in our group session was I feel like I was very successful as a leader in this situation. I feel thankful that I was in this course for this, but I also hope that this level of awareness that I have in sensitivity resurfaces when the next ism uh, issue related to isms comes across my desk and that I'm able to pay tribute to my success in this class and my responsibility to social justice and providing what's needed to encourage, support, and build up the next student that needs my support or the next staff member that needs my support um, when that situation comes across. And I'm sure I will. I, I feel like if I can keep this conversation going, uh, if I can continue to be reflective, I, I feel like the, this course has made a valuable impact on my personal practice. So thank you, Dr. McAsee, and I'm gonna leave you now with, I'm gonna leave you now with, I wanna introduce you to Magunthan, and I pulled him aside and I asked him, uh, how have you felt being back at school? Because before he was school, he was, before he was at school after his accident, he was at home for uh, two, three months, and he was really dying to get back at school, but he was sad because he thought people would make fun of his leg, he thought he would have too many challenges at school, um, and I feel like how he is and the smile on his face right now is something that you gotta see. Uh, also, Miss Ashy, who is the most wonderful teacher, who has worked with him and spent extra time these last few weeks, and I've been a part of. She's been the one person a part of this process that I've kind of implemented since learning about that he was going to return. Um, and so she, when she speaks, she's going to speak to the types of course uh, concepts that that I applied directly here. Um, and she's not, she's gonna speak to them and not really know about them because they're just things that, they're just part of the way in which we, we were able to accommodate Magunthan upon his return. So here is Magunthan and Miss Ashi. Okay, this is the camera right there. Right there, look at that little dot. Say, hey Magunthan, how are you? How you been? Have you enjoyed uh, I wanted to, you know there's something uh, uh, called a Christmas dragon? Oh really? Tell yeah. Me about that one, yeah. A story? Sure. sure. Uh, that Christmas dragon was the Santa's pet. Santa's pet. Okay. And then uh, that uh, dragon helped Santa give presents all over the world. A dragon did it? Did he not burn the presents? No, he didn't. He didn't have fire breath. Oh, that's good. That was a very helpful brag dragon. And then Would on you read his this tail. In a book? Yeah. Okay. On his tail, he, uh, he had a, a, a sack attached to his tail. Wow. So it could give presents all over the world. That is cool, yeah. Isn't that neat? That's neat. So how hey how have you been feeling? You're glad to be back at school? Yes. Yeah. You tell me the best part about being back at school. Uh, I liked the part uh, when it's snack time. <laughs> you like snack time? You don't get snack time at home, do you? Not like here. What's for snack? It's usually a treat, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How are you feeling getting around school? Is it easier for you now? Yes. Yeah, what makes it easier for you? What's the easiest? Uh, You're getting stronger. Yeah. And I'm going faster. On the wheelchair? Oh, you're yeah. going faster walking. Do you still use that wheelchair that your dad bought you? Yes, uh, for the cafeteria. Just for the cafeteria, okay. Uh, is there anybody especially nice to you at school? Uh, only boys. Only boys? No, I know a bunch of girls in your class that are always nice to you. So, uh, so I know the word, the girl that helps me the most. Yeah, who's she? Sai. Sai, absolutely, yeah. 
good. And Miss Ashley, she's doing good, helping you out. Miss Ashley's a great teacher, isn't she? Yeah. Look, there's Miss Ashley. Miss Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Let's what? take the picture of the line. What about, oh yeah, Let's we'll go take back. the okay. picture of the line. Okay, hold on, flip it around there. Just flip I had to flip it around. Um, that's a good question. I don't think we can. Okay, we'll take a picture of the line. <laughs> Here comes everybody. I guess we're going to go get a picture up there. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So I'm happy that you're back at school with us. And <laughs> let's uh, get stronger and stronger by the day, no? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's end this interview. Next time. Until next time. Do do do. Oh, big. Hi, Ashi. Hey, so Mark. This is Maganthan's teacher. Hi. Hey. This is for my class. Okay. And I just wanted to check in with you how, how some of your first thoughts and about this experience with, with um, coming back. Thanks for asking. This has been a very enriching experience for me. It's my first time. I am teaching a child who has lost uh, a limb. And Mukundan is a very special person. He's made life very easy for me and for the class because of his openness and his willingness to, to work and to take the challenges as it's a, a new life for him. So um, the, the experiences have been very positive and Mukundan is just a great little boy to, to work with and to, to um, generate a class our mindset, our, our uh, class mindset has changed. We've had a growth mindset change where children in the class have looked for being caring and respectful. That comes from within. And uh, this shows their integrity. So uh, thanks to Mukundan that life is quite smooth and, and beautiful with him in the class. So how, w what were some of the things that we did before he came back and while he's been back that you, that you believe were important parts of his success now? Um, when we heard about Mukundan, the first thing uh, Martin and the head of school did was to, to ensure that it's wheelchair friendly. So uh, two or three weeks before Mukundan came, the school um, put those ramps in place. But uh, it was really nice when Mukundan came to class that he was already almost free of using the wheelchair and was um, very comfortable with, on his crutch. So uh, that was one thing we put in place. We also talked to um, all the specialist teachers, especially the PE teachers, to see how they can modify and uh, help with games and swimming. Um, he is practicing to swim at home right now before he gets into the school pool. But, um, and then having a, a, a nice meeting with his parents, talking about his strengths, what makes him a, a stronger person uh, with this changed life. Um, that he's had to deal with. So um, having those meetings, talking with the school psychologist, all the specialists, getting the, the, the ramps in school, talking to our children, um, ordering books that deal with children who have disabilities, and to, to look at it as something that we can see as um, it's, a, it's a normal way of life, and bringing that together. And truly, all these things put together has helped with the smooth transition of Mukundan into grade one. Thank you.